Harrison is expected to resign from the law firm today. He will assume his duties as assistant prosecutor tomorrow. Think you like working in a prosecutor's office? I don't know as I'm going to. Didn't he say nothing about taking you with him? Ain't that just like a man for you? You slay for him, you do all his thinking for him till he gets a reputation and a new job. Then what happens? He drops you. No, oh, I've worked for him too long anyway. Change will do me good. Don't tell me. You're just saying that. Because you can take it on the chin. Oh, look, Maisie, let's drop it. I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, you don't have to get sore, Linda. But I got eyes. The way you pampered your boss, and then to be cast off with no notice or nothing, it's disgusting and discouraging. Didn't even say he'd miss you, I'll bet. Oh, why should he miss me? Secretary's only a secretary. A dime a dozen. Yeah? He don't take that dime a dozen kind of them ritzy places you two been dancing at. Well, that doesn't make us Siamese twins. He's free to go his way. Good morning, Mr. Harrison. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. Nice picture of you in the paper. Yeah. The district attorney's been phoning you all morning. Tell him I'm not working for him yet. Not until tomorrow. Oh, then it is true. Uh, this is your last day here. Practically my last hour. Oh, uh, you can help me pack my personal belongings. Oh, yes, I've already started. Yeah, she's a way ahead of you. Oh, maybe. You shouldn't have said that. Well, somebody's got to tell him. Uh, what about my certificate? Oh, sorry. A lawyer can't very well practice law without his certificate. We had a lot more fun putting it up than taking it down. Remember, you hung it up there for luck. Too bad you can't hang it up in my new office. Is it? Would you miss me? Why, of course. You're more than efficient. You're practically my right arm. Of course, you probably wouldn't understand this new job. But those attorneys have to be specialists. Anyway, they're going to supply me with one. So I couldn't have you even if I wanted to. Which you don't. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You're okay, and besides, you're good to look at. Don't pack that thing. Ten to one, they'll give me some old chromo full of wisdom and with false hair. The dime a dozen variety. Right. You know the type. Uh, Mr. Harrison, you're due in court in 20 minutes. Now, Mr. Harrison, you mustn't go out without your overcoat. You can't afford to catch cold till after the trial. Well, I've said that again and again. Does that make me the dime a dozen well, variety? Well, hardly. Oh, you boss me, but you have a way with you. You're a nice person, though. I wonder how you're going to get on with my successor here. You're going to make him keep his feet off the desk, stop running his fingers through his hair, be sure that he eats his meals regularly and goes to the dentist. Oh, stop it. I'm happy about your new position, but I'm not exactly bursting with joy about breaking in a new boss. I could give you a good letter of recommendation to some other firm, in case you didn't want to stay here. Oh, you needn't bother. I'll get along. If you're through with me now, I'll send the rest of your things over to your new office. I hope to be remembered as part of your office fixtures. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Don't do me an injustice. I wanted you to have something to remember me by, so I stopped at the florist this morning. You, you mean the same one we stopped at that night? Yes, the one where you like that pen. Why, it's, it's exactly like the other one. It's the same pen. But the other pen was broken. The man meant, uh, at least he told me he meant it. Here, I'll get it fixed. Oh, no, not this pen. I wouldn't want to change for anything. Well, you just hold it right there. And I'll see if I can fix it really. Here. How's that? David. What beautiful. Well, you never even hinted you cared. Why, you're crazy. Who said I did? Oh, you're crazy yourself. Oh, no. I just had to have a better job in order to support you. Support enough. me in the manner in which I'm accustomed? No, you should see the manner, David. My people are poor. Oh, so poor. And you're the main support. You do your own hair, and your mother takes in washing, and you're just a nobody with a terrible past, and uh, so what? Do I lose a secretary and get a wife? Here, in a 
taxi. A taxi? Oh, a taxi. Something must have happened. Now, don't get all excited. If you took a taxi once before, weren't you were late for supper? Open the door! Open the door! Hello, everybody. A taxi. Well, what bank did you rob? Oh, such a thing to say. Well, answer your father. Uh-huh. <laughs> I lost my job. Uh -huh. <laughs> So funny about losing your job? No job, no work, nothing to do the live long day, nothing to do but loaf and play. Oh, here, Jerry. Your mother, the coach you wanted. Oh, I'm sorry, dear mother. Oh, Linda. Where'd you get the money? Savings account, my sweet. For you, Dad. That's the knock the girl puts cold with. And how? This is for me. Well, where are you going to wear that? Oh, when I had breakfast in bed. Say, what's the matter? Have you lost your mind? Yes, my mind, my heart, my independence. They belong to my husband. Uh, Your husband? husband. Uh-huh. Well, didn't you think I'd ever get one? I'm engaged. Or uh, do I make myself clear? Linda. Well, wh uh, who? For the love of Mom's apoplexy, Linda, open up. Who are you going to marry? David Harris. Your boss? My ex-boss. He's quitting his job, too. Oh, he's coming here to live. What, a governor in this house? Uh, not so fast, Linda. In order to be governor, he has to be elected. You know, people vote, election, and all that stuff. Oh, yes, he heard about that. So he's going to be district attorney first. Now, just when is he going to be district attorney? Oh, well, first he's going to be just an assistant to the district attorney for a couple of weeks. Uh, listen, Busy, uh, are you sure he's got that assistant job? Oh, yes, he starts tomorrow. Uh, that's definite? That's definite. Uh, then I can keep the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. Are you sure you love him? No, oh, Mother. Come on, darling. Where, Mother? Out of the White House and eat your supper. Oh, I can't. David is taking me out to dinner. Supper! Dinner! Don't be low-browed, Dad. David coming here tonight? Yes. Oh, he'll be here any minute. Well, don't look so scared. I want my family to make a good impression on him. This is the first time he's seen you. Mother, take off that apron and fix up your hair a little. Jerry, how about putting on your Sunday suit? This is it. Oh, Dad, don't third degree him. He's not going to kidnap me. He's going to marry me. What's his politics? Oh, for heaven's sakes, don't bring that up. And Mother, don't cry when you meet him. Now, come on now, look your best. Are you sure you got him? Dad. Oh, there he is. I'll have to let him in. Hurry now, change your clothes and clean up the room, will you? Oh, come on. Tony. Tony, that's right. Tony Baxter. Two years off for good behavior. Oh, no, don't. What's the matter? Oh, I ain't run away from any cops. I'm free. Out on parole. Everything's Jake. Oh, please, Tony, go away. Why? Oh, I'm expecting somebody. Well, I won't bite them. We got things to talk about. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Listen, I've been waiting four years to see you, and here I am. Now, tonight. Not tomorrow. Well, look who's here. Ain't it nice that we can all be together again? Look who's growing up. Well, Jerry, you ought to be glad to see me. Hiya, Baxter. Oh, so it's Baxter now. What's the matter with calling me Tony? Hello, Tony. That's better. Old man Wilson. Still fooling him, huh? Still hanging on a cane. Hello, Mother Wilson. Mother Wilson, you get out of this house. Oh, so that's the way it is, huh? Close that door. I said close the door. Well, let's get this thing straight. Come on in here, I got things to say. Well, come on in. You know, I'm the same guy who used to be welcome here. So you don't want no part of me, huh? 
All right, get this. I got in a jam. I did my stretch. Now I'm free, purified. I'm figuring on continuing where we left off. If there are any objections, I'll get them from Linda. I don't need a grandstand. Please go, Tony. Now. I promise I'll see you tomorrow. Don't you plead with him, Linda. He has no claim on you and he doesn't dare force his attentions. I'll call the police. No need for you to exert yourself, Mother. Let Jerry do it. Well, kid, what do you say? Is it the cops or don't you want to see them? You can't scare anyone. Go on, beat it, Junior. All of you. Please do, Mother. I'll talk to him. There's time before David comes. Who's this you're expecting? The man I'm going to marry. Oh. While I'm doing time, some guy steals my girl. I never was your girl, Tony. No? Well, we played at it, didn't we, sweetheart? We were going to tie the knot once, except for a little bad luck. The bad luck was your arrest as a thief, a bandit. Take it easy. The good luck was when I found out how you made your money, how you could afford to take me to those expensive places. Money is money. If we'd have been married before you got wise, you'd have loved me just the same. I'd have hated you and despised myself. Hey, that's a nice piece of ice. Who's the new boyfriend? A lawyer I've worked for. A lawyer? A mouthpiece. Well, well. And I don't stack up against that kind, huh? Come here. What do I have to do, match him for dough? Well, he isn't rich, but what he has, he's earned honestly. Honest money. A lawyer who gets his money honestly. Now, ain't that something? Listen to me. I had two lawyers. They were going to keep me out of jail. Did they ask me if my money was honest? And when the judge found me guilty and sent me up as a criminal, did those lawyers give me back my crooked money? Don't be a sap. They tried to get all of it. But they didn't get it. I've got a nice little roll hid away. Enough to take care of us for the rest of our lives. And, baby, I'm gonna marry you. Jerry, come here. I said, come out here. Come here. You tell Linda that I got plenty of dough and you can prove it. I said, tell her. Speak up. Tell Linda I got plenty of dough. Well, you're wrong, Tony. If you mean money for the stolen jewelry you gave Jerry to keep for you while you were in prison, there is none. The jewelry is back where it came from. I made Jerry give it back. We gave it to the police. You gave it to the police? My stuff? Oh, Tony! Get up! Tony, Tony, get up. Tony, 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 All right, get out of my sight. Don't let me ever see you again. Beat it! Come on, Jerry. All right, all right. The police know that jewelry was stolen. No, they don't know that. I suppose you gave the kid a gold medal for being a good boy. I thought I was coming home to a pile of dough. All tucked away for me. Broken, nobody loves me. Now, ain't that too bad? Mother, Dad, please go. Dad, go, please. Leave us alone, will you? Oh, Dad. Don't you see, Tony? Everything's changed. We're content and happy now. Do you want to spoil all that? Can't you give us a break and leave us alone? If you ever really cared about me, you wouldn't hurt us now. I don't figure I'm doing you any favors by giving you up to a lawyer. He'll double-cross you sooner or later. If I wanted to hurt you, I'd spill on that kid. He'd get a trip up to the big house for handling hot ice. Now, that ain't my way. I don't want to scare you into nothing. You reformed your kid brother. Okay. I'm going to give you a chance to reform me. Yeah. After you get through seeing your bow tonight, you come to me. We'll figure out something. I want a deal for time. Time to show you that I'm on the level. And you'll give me that time, too, baby. I'm at the Arcadia Cottages. 
Out the boulevard till you come to the stadium. Turn left, one block more and you'll see the name. The Arcadia. I'll be there. What time will you be there? In an hour, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? I mean, I'll, I'll be there in about an hour. Uh, well, if you're not there in an hour, I'll be here to get you. Maybe I ought to meet Davy at that. Jail. Why can't we call the police? Because they'd ask us about Jerry. My Jerry didn't steal that jewelry. Oh, no, Mom. He was just keeping it for Baxter. And you made him take it back. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you all about that. But, well, now we've got to face David. Oh, help me think of some excuse. I, I can't go out to dinner with him. But why? Well, I, I'm too upset. Give me a hanky, Mom. All right, darling, baby. Sorry to be late, darling, but I had some last-minute business. Well, I've had my troubles, too. Telling Mother and Dad about a new son-in-law is special news. They're so excited, they're jittery. Well, not half as jittery as I am. What do you want? I ain't got a question, now. I suppose you don't remember something. What about? I don't want no trouble, Tony, but I got a share in that dough you hit out. Oh, you got a share in nothing. Same as I have. Nothing. I want my dough. I got a habit. I want my split. I've been waiting for it for years, ever since you was put away. Well, you're out of luck. No, you don't. I want my cut. I told you there ain't no dough. Now beat it. Take your hands off me, you scum. Look what's calling me scum. Excuse me. I was just drinking my supper. Something I can do for you? I'm expecting a lady. I want you to send her up to my cottage. Oh, you live here, huh? That's right. Number three, remember? Oh, yeah, sure. I remember you now. You come in this afternoon. 
Got a register. I already registered. It don't make any difference. You got a register for the lady. That's my wife. That's all right. Regulations. You got a register for your wife. How long you know her? Listen, you old sponge. All you gotta do is see that that lady finds me. Look, buddy, would you like to have a little bourbon? No. No, it won't hurt you a speck. Number 11. Number 3. Hey, buddy, sure you don't a little? How many times do I have to tell you? No. Okay, buddy. You all right? Of course. Why did you follow me? Where's Tony? Please, Jerry, I'm going to talk to him alone. No, you're not. I am. Jerry, you can't do this. Give it to me and go home. No, I won't. Not unless you go with me. I heard him make you come here. Give it to no, me. No, I won't. I won't go without you. Do as I say. Then hurry. Take it easy. Get a pillow. There you are. Somebody was a pretty good shot. But do you know who it was? Don't you know? You don't think I did? I don't know. Might have been a good idea. But, Tony, you've got to believe me. Okay, don't get excited. Get out of here before you're caught. All right, I'll call a doctor. Uh. Call a doctor, but don't call him from here. All right, go on, beat it. You're wasting time. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, hold the phone a minute, will you? Check these numbers. All right, call those numbers again. Take it easy there, will you? All right. J. 42. N. 27. 7. 4. 27. 7. 4. Check. Yeah, that's all. No, I got that. Don't need any more. That's all. Well, the whole thing ties up tight. New assistant prosecutor has an open and shut case for his first. Which one of you gentlemen is Murphy? I am. 
And you're the new assistant prosecutor. Glad to know you, Mr. Harrison. Thank you. This is Joe Wallace. He's on the case with me. How do you do, Joe? Oh, yeah. uh, come inside. What do you got there? Exhibit A? That's right. The gun we picked up for the shooting took place. The district attorney tells me you've got this case all sewed up. Well, pretty tight. We'll leave something for you to do. You can't close these things without a court trial. That's your job. All right, let's add this one up. Let's see, the fellow was shot, his name Baxter, Tony Baxter. That's right. Hmm. And a bad reputation, eh? Yeah, first day out of jail. And somebody waiting for him with a grudge. And a gun. Traced it back to the owner. Found everything but bullet. One shot fired. Can't find the lead slug. The operation showed it uh, passed right through the shoulder. Doctor said it didn't do much damage. We'll need that bullet to tie back to that gun. You say you traced the gun? Yeah, to an old lame fellow named Wilson. Wilson? What's his first name? Frank Wilson. Runs a second-hand jewelry shop down on 3rd Street. He didn't do the shooting. He's in the clear. And he had a license to carry firearms in his shop. We covered all that. Well, have you any idea who did the shooting? Well, he has a son. A kid named Jerry. Did you arrest her brother? Brother? Whose brother? Uh, well, I mean the boy, the son. Oh, you know the family. Well, yes. Enough so we want to make sure not to make any mistake. No mistake about this. We're going over there now to pick him up. You want us to bring him here, or will you talk to him down at the jail? No, I'll go along with you now. It is necessary. Well, I want to make sure that we're not wrong. Well, why do you insist on remaining here? We told you that Jerry isn't here. We don't know where he is. Maybe he's down at Father's store. No, lady, we talked to your husband. Your son didn't go to work this morning. But, David, why won't you let me bring Jerry down to your office for questioning? But, Linda, you've just said you don't know where he is. Well, I might find him. Excuse me, Mr. Harrison. Now, look, miss, please don't be personal. These jobs are always tough when you know the people. Now, we're going to stay here and see if your brother does come home. Well, can't you send the policeman away? Must you treat us like criminals by searching our home? Nowhere in the house. All right, Joe. Okay, Joe. All right. In here. Jerry. I picked him up on the corner. Jerry Wilson? Yes, sir. Answer a few questions, will you, son? You don't have to if you don't want to. Well, that's right. I might help you. You know this gun? I... I think I've seen it somewhere. Where? Maybe at my father's store. Did you have it last night? No. What would you say if I told you your fingerprints were on it? Well, I helped my father at the store. We often handle guns there. So it's like that. Where were you last night? Here. All night? Yes. In and out. Did you get as far as the Arcadia Cottages? Where's that? Know a man named Baxter? I met him. Did you shoot him? No. Did you ever belong to his gang? Gang? Baxter was shot with a 38. That's a 32. Is it? You're under arrest, kid. Come on. Let's go. Oh. I can come down and see him, can't I? Of course. Come on, kid. Bye, Jerry. Linda, it might help matters if you and I could talk this over. Can you throw any light on it? Would I let my brother be arrested if I knew anything to prevent it? 
Did you know this fellow, Baxter? Jerry knows him. I may have met him. If you'll excuse me now, I must take care of Mother. Wait a minute. Put that coffee back. I may want some more. Uh, let's get this thing in high. That's okay. Hey, what was that I had for dessert? Pudding, raisins, and nuts. That's what I mean. Open the door. Who is it? Tell him it's Sniffy. Sniffy? Let him in. Nothing? You don't look so good, Sniffy. I'm all right. Mm -hmm. You just think you're all right. Ain't a bad place either. Good food. Better beds than you get in jail. You'll like it. Hop in. Out with it. What's on your mind? Nothing. Heard you were shot, that's all. Something you want to tell me about it? I don't know nothing, Tony. Honest, I don't. How'd you know I was shot? Read in the papers. Yeah. That's right, I read in the papers. Honest, I did. You're lying, Sniffy. You never read a newspaper in your life. You know, Sniffy, you ought to be careful. If you take one more trip up the river, they're going to start calling you showboat. I'll be out of here in a couple of days. I'll be looking for you. I'll beat it. more stuff in the Baxter case. Not much here. You knew it was a girl that phoned for the doctor? Uh, yeah. Probably the same one that was registered as his wife. Then old Gardenia we found in the room where he was shot. Looks like somebody stepped on it. Won't help any. Here's a pen he's broken off. Since it wasn't Baxter that wore it, must belong to the same girl. I uh, tried to find that broken piece of the pen, but no luck. Anything else? No, that'll be all. What can I tell a lawyer? He'll only ask a lot of questions, and I don't dare answer them. You can't go to trial without a lawyer, Jerry. I know that, Linda. I've been doing a lot of thinking. They got it on me on account of that gun. I can't explain that. Not unless I say I was there. 
Went there to shoot him, and somebody else beat me to it. They won't believe that. I'm your only witness. Yeah. And you can't say anything, or your David will think I was trying to save your honor or something. And where will that leave you with him? I don't know. If only I could tell him everything. You've got to promise to keep your name out of this, Linda. No matter what happens. Promise? Mr. Harris of the prosecutor's office to see you. Come on, miss. That's all right. I'll talk to both of them. Yes, sir. Hello, Linda. Hello, son. Now, I'm the prosecutor on this case, so I can't give you very much advice. Has he a lawyer? No, he hasn't. Sit down. Your brother's in pretty serious difficulty. Now, it's my job to find him guilty. I'm going to have to ask him a couple of questions. You still don't have to answer any without advice of counsel, Jerry. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Now, I just want to ask you this. There was a woman at the scene of the shooting. We know that because she called the doctor. Do you happen to know any of Baxter's women friends? How would I know? Oh, I didn't think you would. Linda, why don't you go up and call on Frank Billings? He's a good lawyer, and I'm sure he'd be glad to help you out. Yes, I will. I'll go now. Bye, Jerry. Bye, sis. Officer. Officer. Goodbye, and thanks for your advice. Goodbye, Linda. You sure you don't remember anything about that woman? You'll have to stand trial. That should be of any interest. Oh, yes. Oh, that'll be all for now. Thank you. You didn't tell me all the facts. It doesn't look so good. Well, Linda, I'll take your brother's case, but on one condition. Well, I'll try and pay you as soon as I can. I didn't mean that. If David suggests that I take your brother's case, he must have his reasons. Only you've got to help. What can I do? First thing is to go and see the man who was shot. Well, is it necessary that I see him? You're the only one whom he might talk to. Well, how can he help? Have you forgotten all the logic and reasoning you learned in this office? Now, you know that the circumstantial evidence against your brother is strong. So strong that I might even believe that he's guilty myself. It's only because you tell me otherwise, Linda. Now, if your brother didn't shoot Baxter, then Baxter might tell you who did. All right. I'll try. Is he going to get your brother out of jail? I don't know. Linda, is Mr. Harrison really going to prosecute your brother? Yes. I can't believe it. After all you've meant to him. Goodbye, Nancy. Well, what do you know? You can never tell about a man. So the man you were going to marry is now prosecuting your brother. Well, that's a perfect setup for me. So you won't tell who really shot you? No. Why should I? Well, you know that Jerry didn't do it. And I know he didn't. What's that got to do with it? The cops don't know it. And your boyfriend, the prosecutor, doesn't know it. But you do. You knew it last night when you tried to put the blame on me. Sure, I know it and you know it. But we're not running this show. 
The mug you want to marry is running this. Let's see how he handles it. Isn't there anything I can do to make you help me? Yeah. Marry me. Don't. What's so tough about marrying me? No worse than marrying that lawyer. Get wise to yourself, Linda. He's the kind of a guy that'll drag you through a mess. And he'll drop you like a hot potato. Get it out of your head. You haven't got a chance. I could have that chance, Tony. Please give it to me. Step on that, will you, baby? What's the matter with you? We used to have some swell times together. Remember when we were going to run away and get married? I had a marriage license already. It's all forgotten, Tony. It's dead. We'll bring it back to life. Never. Mr. Harrison to see you. No. Show him in. Go with me, Tony. Go. <laughs> Go. Oh, how do you do? And you're Baxter. Yeah. I was just going. I, uh, I only came to see if he couldn't... Uh, identify his assailant. Did he? No. Did he say he recognized your brother? Don't answer that. Look, mister, this ain't a courtroom. Don't try to work over my visitors. Oh, I didn't know that you were such good friends. I didn't say we were. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help to you. I might remember something later. How's your memory about the girl that you were with that night? Was I with a girl? I'm not guessing. Let me see. I meet so many people. Look, fellow, my brain's a little cloudy. It may not clear up until right after you've convicted her brother. Do you object to me personally, or is it that you just don't like to answer questions? I'm just allergic to lawyers. I was just saying that you'd convict your own mother if you thought it'd help you. And when you're taking those bows to that grandstand, I'll get a big kick out of cutting you down and making a yapping monkey out of you. Is that your only reason for holding out? Is it? So you think I'd convict my mother? That's what I was telling the lady. Who, uh, Miss Wilson? Yeah, Miss Wilson. I was sympathizing with her. Strange that you'd sympathize with a girl whose brother just shot you. Did he? I'm asking you that. Uh, if I could only get my memory working. Still in the days. Is that unusual? You wouldn't try to be funny, would you, mister? Not any funnier than your answers. If you want any more information, don't hesitate to call on me. Thanks for nothing.
now in session. The Honorable J. William Johnston, Judge Presiding. Proceed with the case. Will uh, Mr. Jerry Wilson please resume the stand? You're being sworn in. Not necessary to take the oath again. Only necessary to remember it. Yes, sir. Now, before the recess, you stated you had merely a speaking acquaintance with Mr. Baxter. Have you refreshed your memory enough to recall just how well you knew him? I knew him pretty well. How long did you know him? A couple of years, off and on. When was this? About four years ago. Up to the time he went to prison? Yes, about that time. During those two years' acquaintanceship, Mr. Baxter came to your home, didn't he? Yes, sir. Frequently? Yes, sir. Pretty often. Many times, wouldn't you say? I object. The witness has already answered. Overruled. Read the question. Many times, wouldn't you say? Pretty often, I guess. Did he come just to visit you? To visit all of us. Whom do you mean by all of us? Mother, father, and me. Anyone else? My sister. Was he accepted as a suitor for your sister's hand? I object. The question is vague. Accepted by whom? The family, the defendant, or the neighbors? Sustained. Did you look upon Mr. Baxter as a suitor for your sister? Yes, sir. Did you approve of him? No. Not altogether, no, sir. You strongly disapproved, didn't you? As a matter of fact, you disliked him so much that you found it expedient... I object. I can object, too. Perhaps you didn't know that. Don't bait the witness and lead him into some commitment which may establish motivation. Sorry, Your Honor. Have you seen Mr. Baxter since his return from prison? Once. When was that? I don't remember the date. You saw him the very night he was shot, didn't you? I object on the grounds that the question is leading. Overruled. You may answer. I saw him that night. Where? At our house. Did he state the nature of his visit? He, he said he came to see my sister. Did you object to Mr. Baxter renewing his attentions to your sister at that time? I object, Your Honor. Reframe your question. Did you still disapprove of Mr. Baxter at that time? Yes, sir. Did you tell him so? No, sir. Did anyone within your hearing tell him he was not welcome? Yes, sir. Did uh, your sister tell him that? Yes, sir. Was there a quarrel? I don't remember. That'll be all. You didn't quarrel with Mr. Baxter? No, sir. You didn't threaten him? No, sir. You didn't order him out? No, sir. And you didn't shoot him? No, sir. No further questions. You're excused. Any more witnesses? One, Your Honor. Will uh, Miss Linda Wilson please take the stand? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony that you are about to give before this court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? I do. State your name. Linda Wilson. Are you the sister of the defendant? Yes. You've just heard your brother's testimony. Are you the sister referred to by him? Yes. Is it true, then, that at one time you were courted by a Mr. Baxter? 
Yes. Is he in this courtroom? Yes. Will you please point him out? Were you ever engaged to marry him? Oh. It was hasty. It was just an infatuation. Just answer yes or no, please. Yes, we were engaged. Did you marry him? No. What, if anything, prevented that marriage? His arrest and conviction of a crime. What kind of a crime? Robbery. Up to then, you were unaware of how he made a living? Oh, yes. What effect did his arrest have upon you? I stopped caring for him. Did you break off your engagement? Yes. Did you communicate with him during his term in prison? No. Did you see him after his release? Yes, the night he was shot. Where? At my home. Who was present? My parents and my brother. Did uh, Mr. Baxter call upon you and your family at that time for any specific purpose? Well, he wanted to renew our friendship. Did he still want to marry you? Yes. What did you say to that? Oh, I refused him. I told him that I loved someone else. Someone whom I intended to marry. Told him that I'd ceased even to think of him long ago. How did he accept your decision? He wasn't pleased. Was he angry? Somewhat. Did he threaten you? Not exactly. Did he insist upon renewing his attentions to you? Well, he asked if he might have more time. Time? Time for what? Time to prove himself, I guess. What did you say to that? I... I only agreed to see him at some future date. That very evening, wasn't it? Yes. Did you consent to meet Mr. Baxter at his place, the Arcadia Cottages? Uh, yes, I did. Did you fear him? Uh, somewhat. Did you keep that appointment? Yes. Did you take your brother with you? Oh, no, no. No, he came later. So you went alone to meet this man whom you feared? Yes. And registered with him as man and wife? That's not true. Didn't you know that you were registered as Mrs. John Doe? No, I didn't know that. Sorry. Did you meet your brother at the Arcadia Cottages? He came later. And when he found you in the cottage with Baxter, he shot him? Oh, no, no. Where did you meet your brother? Well, away from the cottage. Did you talk with him? Yes. What was said? He, he tried to get me not to see Mr. Baxter. I explained to him that we were only going to talk things over. I was only going to convince him that I could never mean anything to him. But I loved the man I was going to marry. Did your brother have a gun with him? Yes, but I stopped him. Stopped him? Stopped him from what? Oh, he struggled. I took the gun away from him, and then I dropped it. it. It fell somewhere. Was the gun discharged? Was it fired? Well, I don't know. We heard a shot. I don't know. I don't think so. And this was not in the cottage? Oh, no. Did you later call a doctor? Well, yes, after we found Mr. Baxter wounded. Oh, you found him? Well, yes, it's the truth. You found him shot? Well, yes. You heard a shot and knew that Mr. Baxter had been hit? Well, not just then, a few moments later. Your brother had a gun outside the Arcadia Cottages. He fired a shot from it, and yet he did not shoot the man whose advances towards you he resented. The man he disliked, detested, feared. Oh, stop it, you're torturing me. He was right. You're hard, you're cruel. He was right. Who's he? Me. Why don't you let her alone? Let go of me. I got a right to be here. I'm the guy they're talking about. Order the court. Release him. I'm here. What's the matter with getting me up there to answer your funny questions? Mr. Harrison, do you know anything about this? Yes, Your Honor. Up to now, he has refused to testify in the case. Want to question him now? If it pleases, Your Honor. No objection? I'd welcome it, Your Honor. You're excused. Put your new witness on the stand. Take the stand. You'll be sworn first. 
Hold up your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give before this court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you? Yeah, I do. State your name. Tony Baxter. If you have any information bearing on this case, why have you withheld it? I wanted her to get a slant of this big shot doing his stuff. I wanted to give him plenty of rope so he'd be sure to hang himself, but good. Come on, mister, ask me some questions. Can you name your assailant? Yeah. There he is. Grab that guy! Go! It's all right. I've got it. Mr. Gale. This ought to prove that you've been barking up the wrong tree. You heard what he said. What about it? Yeah, I shot him. I'll do it again, too. Take him out of here. And that makes a yapping monkey out of you. <laughs> Mr. Billings, Mr. Harrison. This case just about finished itself with this new evidence. You two had better pick up the pieces and uh, present it to me in the morning. Court will recess until tomorrow morning. Congratulations, Jerry. Thanks. I'm glad, Jerry. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Jerry, is he free? He will be tomorrow. I thought you'd like to have this as a little souvenir. It's the bullet slug that was shot through your shoulder. What'd you hold it out for? Why didn't you spring it? I didn't know what gun it came out of. I had to wait for you to snap out of your daze and uh, make a yapping monkey out of me. Always at the head of your class, ain't you? Linda, I'm sorry I had to treat you so rough, but we had to smoke out Baxter. Oh. My pen. You knew. Mm-hmm. And you had it mended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 